May we give our confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Our overseas believers as well, let us all greet each other. Let us stay awake by prayer. With this, today's message is entitled, Jesus' Prayer Concentration. As we walk our walk of faith, what is important is a spiritual role model. A spiritual role model. Depending on who your role model is, whether you're properly guided and grow or not, is determined. So, who do you think is the best role model for God's saved children to follow? Who should the most important role model be? It is Jesus Christ. Jesus came to this earth and already showed us how to live a life of faith through his three years of public ministry. He was hungry if he did not eat. If he worked a lot, he was tired. He was 100% human in that way. But how did he live a walk of faith while he lived on earth? And it is all contained in detail in the words of the four Gospels. Therefore, following what Jesus did, is a biblical walk of faith, although we cannot do 100% what he did, but if we were to even just imitate what he did, that is already a biblical walk of faith. And you must live a biblical walk of faith for you to have spiritual transformation and growth. And your faith will continuously grow. That is the best path for a walk of faith. Jesus showed various aspects of spiritual life and the most representative of which was a life of prayer. A life of prayer. Jesus' ministry began with prayer. It all began with prayer and it, it ended with prayer. When he began his public ministry, when he was 30 years old, because it was God's time schedule, it was he started his public ministry when he was 30 years old. And before he officially began his ministry, he went into the wilderness for 40 days, fasted, and prayed. And even while he was doing his ministry, he never stopped praying, even before carrying his final cross. Even on the cross, he prayed. And the words he left behind during his resurrection and ascension were not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. It said to wait for the promise. What does this mean? It means for us to concentrate on prayer. It does not mean to just do nothing and wait, but he tells us to pray and wait. So 120 disciples gathered in Mark's upper room and came together in one heart and put their efforts to prayer. And what happened then? On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came upon them and the disciples for the first time received the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, of the triune God. They had this spiritual experience. And so the 120 disciples who gathered there were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they went out to the field. And they completely changed. So they went out to the field and they had completely changed. So they were afraid and they were hiding in Mark's upper room and they were praying there. But then after they received the filling of the Holy Spirit, they were no longer afraid. And so they went boldly before the razor sharp public council. And he's, they started to declare the truth of the gospel and say that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is the Christ. And he is the solution to all problems. And it said every day, whether in the temple or at home, they never stop teaching and preaching that Jesus is the Christ. That is what a disciple is. Whoever they met, they declared that Jesus is the Christ. 
that Jesus the Christ is the solution to all problems. They declared this. They became disciples who declared this. And that is a biblical disciple. Just because you receive disciple training and receive the certificate, it doesn't matter. But your life, in your life, whoever you meet, you must be able to boldly proclaim that Jesus is the Christ. This spiritual flow continues to this very day. The gospel that the early church members proclaimed is still continuously being spread through our lips. Jesus' public ministry, like today's message suggests, was a life concentrated on prayer. Jesus, who was God, actually had no reason to really pray because he's God himself. But he prayed. And what is the reason for that? Because he showed us that prayer is the core of a walk of faith, and he showed his disciples and us what is important in a walk of faith. And above all, he taught us how to pray through the Lord's Prayer. It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We were taught by Jesus himself that this is how we must pray. What well, is the first paragraph of the Lord's Prayer? It gives us the essential answer to who we should pray to, how we should pray, and what we should pray for. All religions in the world also have prayers. They all have prayers. Even cults have prayers. But what is crucial and decisive is who you are praying for. Who in whose name are you praying for? Who are you praying to and in whose name are you praying in? We pray while calling God the Almighty Creator, our Father. We say, Father God. We call Him our Father. It is on a complete different level from worldly religions that pray to Satan, devils, and demons. And rightfully so, the results are also opposite of each other. They're on the opposite ends. And how, can, how when do you know this? You know it before death that these are completely different results. Because it all depends. Does Satan take that soul or do angels take that soul? Furthermore, the goals and direction are all contained in this prayer. And that is to live a life in which the kingdom of God is fulfilled on this earth. And so wherever I am, that is the kingdom of God. I need to become the kingdom of God. And my household, my family, my church needs to become the kingdom of God. Because this, the, the church is like a branch of God's kingdom. You must enjoy the kingdom of God in the church. And we must live a life that enjoys the kingdom of God. And we must pray for God's will and plan to be fulfilled through our lives. That's what prayer is. God, may God's will and plan be fulfilled in our life. That is what prayer is. And above all, prayer is a spiritual breathing. Breathing. Whether your breathing is regulated or not will determine the state of your health. Patients cannot breathe very well, and they have a difficult time breathing. And people who have severe sicknesses, they need machines to help them breathe. It's very severe. The vitality of our spiritual life also depends on prayer. It's all on prayer. And that is why Christianity is called a religion of prayer. Today's message contains the contents of the prayer that Jesus said before carrying the cross. Because he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, it is called the Gethsemane prayer. And after completing this prayer, he was arrested and went on the path of the cross. It was an extreme suffering, excruciating pain that no human could endure. And at the time when Jesus had to go down that very path, he gained the strength to bear the cross through prayer. 
after prayer. And it was through prayer that he was able to bear the cross. It was one of the most excruciating pains a man could undergo. The, all hands and feet had to be pierced by a nail until, and hung on the cross until their very last breath. I bless all believers at Yewon, Yewon Church in the name of the Lord to focus on prayer no matter what situation or environment you are in and transcend yourself. Prayer transcends yourself. It transcends your power because I can't do it. I am incompetent. I am weak. And that is why we pray. People who do not pray, they think that it's because they are smart and because they can live depending on their power. No. They, they're saying that even without God's help, they can live with their own might. What is the most spiritual arrogance? It is to not pray. They, they, that's basically saying that you do not need God's power and help, that you live with your own power. When I was young, my mom and our family was poor and our mother would work all day and then she'd go to early morning prayer and we would have family worship every day and so watching that I thought our mother's prayer that prayer with that power of prayer and that power that came from the prayer I think we stand today and I realize that prayer is that powerful it transcends me because I cannot do it May you move to a place where you experience the power of the heavenly throne through today's word. Point number one, the prayer that follows God's will. Verse 32, and they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And when he took with him, Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled and he said to them my soul is very sorrowful even to death remain here and watch to so these passages from the day before Jesus went to the cross to atone for all human sins this was a day before his crucifixion to forgive our sins. And there's a story about Jesus going to the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples. But it said that he prepared for his atoning death on the cross by prayer. If you look closely at the ministries of Jesus, there is a ministry that appears like a connecting link in the middle for all of his ministries. And that was none other than prayer. Even while carrying out his ministry, he was praying. It was always a praying ministry. Among the ministries of spreading the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, teaching and countless sick people, in the middle, he always prayed. And so what was the source to make all of Jesus' ministries possible? It was prayer. Why? Because even Jesus was also human he was 100% God but he was also 100% human and so because he had a human flesh there were deceptions of Satan and he can feel tired and irritated and Satan could have deceived him because he had a physical body as well and so that is why he continuously prayed even as he preached the word and performed miracles he quietly went to the mountains alone and prayed late into the night and even into the dawn hours of the morning Luke 22 it said that it, he went up to pray as was his custom it was a habit for him and because it was before he was crucified, he did not just go up specifically on that day, but it shows that he had prayed all the time and regularly. It wasn't that he went up to pray just because it was a special day and that because he was about to be crucified, but he was always praying. It was always a regular habit of his. And this shows that he was built on a habit of prayer this way. Like Jesus, we must make prayer a habit. And I see that some people 
whether he's an elder or an encourager, it seems like it, I can see that it's a time for them to pray, but they don't pray. There is no church like ours. We're, uh, well, the other church has a prayer cave. And so we have these spaces for you to go in and pray because I have that, that consuming passion where when I was young, I couldn't pray all I want, even though I wanted to. And prayer houses were really, really far away. And there were a lot of inconveniences. So I made sure that there are prayer caves here. Because and when you go in there, you can't even hear the person beside you. You can shout out to the Lord as much as you want. And when you pray, those tremendous big problems become tremendous blessings. Big problems become great answers. I'm sure of it. And if there are difficulties that others cannot face and bear, great answers await you. You must experience that. When my son was diagnosed to be deaf, at that time, my senior pastor at that time, you know what he first said to me? He said, Oh, God has sent an angel to this family, he said. My son was deaf, and he said that God sent an angel to my family. And I could never forget that. In the pastor's eye, he saw it as an angel being sent to us. It was a tremendous answer. And so every night I went to the church. There was no one there. And I would spend all night, like, as if three years was a day. And all, the start to all of that was prayer. And of course, before then, I did go to go and fast and pray and all of that, but it had no use. Prayer was not the same. All prayer is not the same. It's not about me enjoying things, but before God, you must start real prayer. All walk of faith is not the same. And so prayers that depend on others to hear and listen to you, those prayers are bound to fail. If God gives you problems for you to pray, then may you begin to pray. Even if you can't go to the prayer caves, at least in the early morning or at night, even if it's just for one hour. And what does Jesus continuously say? He talked about 24-hour prayer, 24-hour prayer. And so, but in the Bible, it said that Jesus with Peter, James, and John, he went up the mountain. But it says that he, it is expressed that Jesus said, my soul is very sorrowful even to death. That is how it was expressed. Jesus, who is the Son of God, expressed himself this way. And what was the reason for that inside this word? It shows us, this shows us that Jesus was 100% human because he had to be 100% human to solve the problems of human beings. Unless you're an ant, you can't communicate with an ant. And so, but Jesus came to earth so that he may be able to communicate with mankind. And so he came to this earth with, 100, with a body that was 100% flesh. And so Jesus experienced everything we experienced. And that is why we're able to communicate with Jesus. And that is why Jesus said for us to pray in Jesus' name. The pain on the cross was something unbearable by mankind. And because it was that, so, that painful and excruciating. At that time, a crucifixion. Death by crucifixion was a was a death that was given to all non-Roman citizens and even to the most the worst criminals, and that is because the death on, by crucifixion was so painful they would at le actually whip the person so they might they may be half dead before actually hanging them on the cross. 
And so the whip at that time had five whips, and it had in each in each string that is attached to the whip, there were animal bones that were attached to it. And so when they would whip someone, it's not just that they're being beat, but their the skin would actually carve be carved out by that whip, and it would s strip away. And there are pictures that are drawings that were drawn by artists very realistically. And so all the body would be torn out that way by the whip. And so they'd be half dead. And this was done because the, the suffering on the cross would be far worse if they had not been whipped half to death. And they'd feel less suffering. And some people, they would pay soldiers to just just um, to kill the, the their family members who were crucified so that they would die quickly, so that they wouldn't have to suffer longer. That's how excruciating the pain would have been. However, if Jesus had died an ordinary death instead of a crucifixion to forgive all sins, would that wonderful great grace have moved man's hardened hearts of Genesis 3, we have so much skepticism in our hearts. And so if we, if he had just died, then would we have been moved? We would have thought, oh, everyone dies. We wouldn't have been moved by that. However, God led Jesus to walk the path of the cross, which led to the greatest suffering and death at that time, so that we who have hardened hearts may be moved by that. And that was how stained our sins were and how grave our sins were. However, the reason Jesus was so distressed about his death on the cross was not simply because he had to suffer physically, but it also showed how great the weight of human sin is. More fundamentally, this death was a death that was momentarily abandoned by God. He was momentarily abandoned by God to take the place of the sins of all mankind. To be momentarily abandoned by God meant that he was temporarily cut off from fellowship with God. That spiritual loneliness was the greater pain that he felt. While living a walk of faith, we must have continuous fellowship with God. And what is that fellowship? It is prayer. That fellowship with God is prayer. And when this is cut off, it must feel more painful than anything else to live a normal walk of faith. That is what a biblical walk of faith is. Oh, because I'm so busy and because I'm so tired and because I have too many things to do, I have had less time to pray. I could not pray. You must be able to feel that. But if you don't pray and you don't feel anything, And so even if you didn't pray and you, f you feel nothing, that person must re-examine their walk of faith. The breathing of their soul has stopped, and how could it be that they're okay with that? If you look at verse 35, and going a little further, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Through the Gethsemane prayer, Jesus teaches us the essence of prayer and what kind of prayer it should be. And so he says, do I really have to drink the cruel cross, curse, and cup of suffering? He says, 
Is there a way without carrying the cross? Yet not what I will, but what you will. Prayer is never about fulfilling my will and purpose. Most religious prayer is about their goals and their will. Most religious prayer prayers about the introductory things, the things that will disappear. That is not a covenant prayer. That is a religious prayer. But a prayer that prays for God, the Father's will and plan to be fulfilled, not my will, but thine be done, that is a covenant prayer. Jesus himself showed us by example. He aligned himself to pray for the invisible things. Most of us, we pray for prosperity, health, money, but those are introductory prayers. But a spiritual prayer is to pray for God's will and plan. What is that? That is a position God has given to me. The prayer for one soul, the prayer for missionaries in the field and the mission field. And so that is the two or seven nations and 5,000 tribes. It's not just a vast prayer, but a specific prayer, a prayer that prays for specific individuals. And for teachers praying for each and every student by name and regional directors to pray for all the households in that region, that is a covenantal prayer, a prayer that is aligned with God's will and plan. This is a prayer the Bible speaks of. And what is true is that when you pray this way, you will receive answers that are on a different level from those of religious individuals in the world. If you look at Matthew 6.33, it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. It is clearly stated. Ephesians 3.20 also reveals that God is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. Far more abundantly, it says. You must have a clear spiritual priority and have a life of prayer, and it is upon that life that the blessing of the throne comes upon them. A French poet defined prayer as follows. Prayer serves to elevate the spiritual and lower the animalistic. And so the spiritual things need to elevate and the things of the flesh must become lowered. The human mind is easily led to do things that are contrary to God's will. And that's what's comfortable for us. That's our nature. And we enjoy that. And that is why we pray, so that we may limit ourselves to that, so that we may overcome that. And so we are easily led to do things that are contrary to God's will. This is because we live in the field of Genesis chapter 3 and because we're born into that, into the field of Genesis 3. What is that? It's being self-centered. It, everything's about my pride, me. And Genesis chapter 6, it's material-centered. It's all about money. That's their 24 hours. And so, of course, with their mouth, they'll say gospel 24, but no, money is their 24. And what is Genesis 11? It is worldly success to become a star, to achieve worldly success. That's their 24. And for these three things, they try to use God. They try to use Jesus and the gospel. But will they be used? Will God allow that? But that's how people live their lives in the world. That's why we must remember all the time in our hearts and our minds that there is always a battle between the desires of the flesh and the desires of the Holy Spirit. There's always a battle between these two in our hearts and thoughts. So which one will you follow? Will you follow the desires of the flesh or the desires of the Holy Spirit? When it comes to unbelievers, they only have one. But for us, we have the Holy Spirit within us. So there is a battle between these two. 
And so in order to receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit, then you have to overcome the desires of the flesh. And when you are able to resist that, then you can be led by the Holy Spirit. A walk of faith is not difficult. Paul said that he dies to himself every day. What does that mean? It means that he departs from the desires of the flesh and goes into the desires of the Holy Spirit so that he may receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And for this, may you surely pray the covenantal prayer. And so the 777 and the 393, these are all covenantal prayers. And so all the documents and materials that are given to you, these are all all covenantal prayers. So may you all become individuals who live a life of covenantal fulfillment and spiritual victory, which God's will, not my will, is fulfilled through covenant prayer. Verse number two, uh, point number two, the victorious prayer that overcomes temptation. Verses 37 to 38 says, And he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus wanted to go up Gethsemane with three disciples, Peter, Jacob, and John in particular, and pray with them. And that's why Jesus tells them to watch in verse 34. Watch meant to stay awake and pray. And then Jesus moved a little further than the disciples and prayed. But as he came back, he saw that the three disciples were asleep. And so before going up Gethsemane, Jesus already held the Passover Passover supper and had talked about his crucifixion and resurrection. And he uh, talked about how the disciples would deny him and abandon him and flee. And when Jesus had said this to the disciples, the, the disciples said, oh, that they, they would rather die than deny Jesus. They made these strong confessions. Nevertheless, contrary to their confession, at a time when they should have been praying with Jesus, they were dozing off. So Jesus tells, says, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? There is the question from Jesus implies much. Jesus called him Simon, not Peter. He said, Simon. Simon was the name he had before he met Jesus, before he was saved. It was a name that he held while he was an unbeliever, and Jesus changed his name to Peter. But here, Jesus says, Simon, are you asleep? It means you have not changed your nature yet. Your unbelieving state has not changed. And so, Jesus tells them again with a lamenting heart to pray that they may not enter into temptation. But they were constantly asleep. They were one heart, full heart, and continuous in the wrong direction. Ultimately, as the disciples didn't pray when they were supposed to be wide awake and praying, all collapsed against the test that confronted them. And they all fled. All these, the, the Peter who confessed at the forefront to die for Jesus, denied Jesus three times. He denied Jesus three times. Ultimately, at the time when they should have been awake and they, when they should have, and because they couldn't stay awake and pray at a time when they should have, they were deceived and they met, were met with pitiful results. And that is why 1 Peter 5, verses 8 to 9 gives us an answer to the reason why we must stay awake and pray. It says, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith. We may not see it, but there is a power of darkness that lures us to fall into temptation. And because they are spiritual beings that we cannot see, there's only one way we can defeat them, and that is to pray using the name of Jesus Christ. It'd be easier if we could see it. There's a saying. Jesus will come down on clouds, and Satan will slide in between the cracks. What does this mean? Satan or the devil 
shoves their way into that little gaps when we are spiritually off our guard, and that is why we must stay awake and pray. Therefore, I bless all young believers in the name of the Lord to stand tall as spiritual watchmen who stay awake and pray 24 hours by holding on to the covenant from the pulpit so that you may all become generational, representational, and monumental witnesses who create a masterpiece of the 25th hour. This is a conclusion. Today's passage shows stark contrast between Jesus who overcame his limit by prayer and the disciples who encountered their limit for failing to stay awake and pray. Having arrived at this mo most important moment of Jesus' salvation ministry, the disciples were faced with their limit. And this is also a depiction of Christians in this generation. What well, is the reason why many Christians encounter frustrating situations, incompetency, and why is it that Christians should live a fiery heart and walk in faith, and yet why is it that they don't have that fire in them? And when you wonder why, compared to an encourager or a deacon, you're not as on fire, there's only one reason for that, and that is prayer. And that's our denomination. We emphasize prayer so much. We emphasize the fact by saying 24, 25. All the messages point to prayer. Because without prayer, you won't be able to believe nor understand. And you won't realize how valuable and precious the word is. And because you don't realize that, people say these useless things. They say, oh, there's too many terminology. It's not a terminology. It's a message. It's so good. The 21 points. I pray with that. Mount Calvary, Mount of Olives, Mars Supper Room, rightful, inevitable, absolute, 24, 25, eternity. And you, you pray with that. And then the seven bars and the seven journeys, the seven guideposts, it's all about prayer. But because people do not pray, it doesn't really come to them. The Holy Spirit needs to work upon them for them to realize. But, and when you once you do that, that is the highest level of spiritual level that's how we are trained the UK England was called the empire in which the Sun never sets but you know the monarch that raised the UK to its greatest glorious days it was Queen Victoria one day a military officer asked the Queen what her secret in governing the country so well was at that time, Queen Victoria answered very simply with one word. She said, prayer. So then the officer asked again, how many times would do you pray? The queen answered with a grin on her face. I only pray once a day. And then she continued just once from when I get up in the early morning until I go to bed at night. What does this mean? What she meant was that as long as she is awake, she would constantly pray. It was just a witty way of expressing that. From morning to the point she goes to bed, she prays one continuous prayer. It's 24. All oh, Yewon believers, may you all pray once a day. Once a day. Just once a day. When I exercise, I see. I always think, oh, I, I sometimes I want to ride a bike, but but if I ride a bike, I have it has I have to ride it for about forty to an hour, and so but then, you know. And it, it gets so tiring, right? And so sometimes I say, oh, let me just do it fi for five minutes. And then when I start doing it for five minutes, that leads to 40 minutes and one hour. So for those who can't pray, just try once. Just try once. Just try it once a day. Just once. Then that prayer will gradually connect to 24. But first, just say, Father God, just try to kneel before God. 
and see how God guides your day. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, Christ is the solution to all problems. You will come to experience this. And may we all become people of biblical prayer. Let us pray. Father God, may all believers of Yewon Church, they have all heard of Jesus' prayer concentration. May they, once a day, start prayer and become people of prayer. May they overcome their power and overcome and transcend all of their incidents and problems and pray before the Almighty Father God and receive answers. May they experience this. And so every day, may they not stop proclaiming that Jesus is the Christ and become evangelists who do so. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.